Good morning, Harry. Good morning, Corey. How'd you smoke? Oh, my God. It's like a rug. <laughs> yeah. Lying down. I got myself a little... Uh, How'd you smoke? I, I got a nicotine inhaler here in my hand. How'd you sleep? I slept really well last night. I had a, I had a sore back the last couple of nights. Um, uh, but it wasn't like, like a back thing. On the bed. <laughs> it was more like uh, I pulled a muscle or something. That's the best way I can describe it. How's your pussy then? Mm, she is just purring, just purring. I gotta, I gotta ask you this: what's, what's up with all the kiss stuff going on? <laughs> because I, I go to the Facebook page and I notice that our, our logo is now Kiss, and I notice that the Facebook cover is like Kiss in lights, and it's just like Kiss, Kiss, Kiss everywhere. What the heck? Well, I thought it was only fair to cover Kiss this this time. Or this week, because uh, I did Ace Fraley last week, and uh, I know it would be an injustice if I didn't shed a little light on them. I feel like I maybe slammed Kiss a bit last week. <laughs> think I was too hard on them? I wouldn't say you were too hard on them, no. I think I always really say this, I just don't like them. I just I don't really care so much for the band. But maybe you're going to transform me tonight. I doubt it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I don't do? I don't spend. It took a long time for me to get transformed. <laughs> mm. I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I've been spending a lot more time on our Facebook page, though, because you got some really cool shit up there all the time. I like to try to post lots of stuff to keep everybody entertained between these wonderful episodes we do. I don't know why I don't, I don't go there all the time, because you've got great pictures, you've got great links, you, you talk about amazing bands. It's like you got a one-man show over there. <laughs> Somebody's got to do something around here. I guess so, yeah. <laughs> well, one of the things that I saw there today, and I kind of I want to dip into this because I noticed you put a picture of the Dep 5 up that we mentioned last week. Because mm -hmm. we were struggling, right, to decide whether or not it was a, what, we thought it was a Yamaha thing or maybe it would not. Well, it was either, for some reason I thought it was the Yamaha, but, but uh, the more I, I searched for pictures, the more I believed it's the role in Dep 5. Mm -hmm. by the rainbowy knobs <laughs> yeah <laughs> roland they had that thing right where they were kind of taking some of the like borrowing some of the colors from the boss line and putting mm -hmm. them in their pro gear yes yep are you colors. watching are you watching porn right now are you surfing the internet and watching porn <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you seem distracted tonight i'm sorry i'm just trying to find a guess the lyrics just in case oh we're doing one of those i don't know i didn't really plan one Okay, that's fine. We yeah. don't have to. I was just thought I'd be prepared if we were. Yeah, I, di I didn't really put one together either. And you know what, Gregerson, we got we got to work this thing out, man, because he is coaching baseball now every Thursday night. So I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know what we're going to do about that. Why? 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 <laughs> why is he coaching baseball? Or what? Yeah, why? I don't know. He's got a kid. Why? I don't know. Something about sex. They had a kid. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really follow Prophylactics. it. Yeah. All right. So what's what's up with all the Kiss trivia and everything? Like, what what are you what are you trying to do here? Are you trying to get me excited about this band? No, 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 no. I thought it'd be funny. <laughs> I thought it'd be funny because I know you you don't you're not really a fan. So I thought it'd be funny to post because <laughs> there's such a flamboyant act, right? The whole makeup thing through the '70s and into the '80s, and and uh, and I thought uh, you know I'd, I'd follow suit and uh, just load it up with with merchandise and propaganda they were i mean they're, that's what they do right that's yeah they're, they're one of the, mo the most uh well-paid bands in the business well gene simmons is i think paul makes quite a bit too yeah i don't know how much i don't know is i don't know what the business relationship is but isn't gene the manager of the band isn't he the guy responsible pretty much for all the marketing all the money all the deals i think he does the marketing yeah right. i'm not sure and then Paul I, just gets his, he just gets checks probably cut over to him, right? Does he? That's, I, that's my guess. I don't know. Then he goes sings Phantom in the Opera. <laughs> Doesn't everybody in the band other than, than Paul, though, get screwed at one point or another? Well, the rest of them are just players, right? They're just paid as, as hired talent. But was, I, I understand, though, in the early days of Kiss, that was not what they, they perceived themselves as being. I thought they felt like they were band members, right? Isn't, isn't there a thing where Ace... 
always felt I don't like he know got what burned. The early on was. If if you want to find out any of this information, go to Haircore in the More <laughs> and check out our blog because I posted their entire Wikipedia history on there. Well, we we have a blog. It's a big read. Yes. Holy cow! I see it. It's the biggest history Dude. ever posted. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Holy crap! All right. What are you What are you doing now? Are you aerating your lawn? I don't understand what you're doing. You were telling me something. Oh, it's been a crazy week with the lawn. Yeah, I. Uh, <laughs> well, I. I figured it, it's it's about it's about time that I uh, changed the snowblower off the tractor. And before I could put the lawnmower on, I thought I'd put the tiller on and give that thing a whirl, make sure it still works. And I tilled a few gardens, made some new flower beds, and basically ripped up a bunch of grass anywhere I could find it. And right, less lawn for me to cut this summer, right? But anyways. Uh, yeah, I noticed as I was out that there was a lot of maple keys sprouting up underneath a lot of the maple trees around the yard. And uh, I thought, uh, maybe I should get rid of those and knock those down. So yesterday and today I've been planting grass seed. And yeah, I knocked down the maple keys. I put the lawnmower on late yesterday and put her as low as, clo- uh, as, low as I could. And I shaved, shaved her right to the wood where these maple keys were. <laughs> so hopefully I knocked those back. Then I aerated the ground with this hand cultivator, and I seeded it. And then today I had a fella come out and roll my lawn for me, so she's ready to go. What I don't understand. This is the one thing I've never understood, um, because I remember when I was younger, uh, you know, my dad, as dads do, spent endless hours in the yard, you know, maintaining the lawn, and yep. that was one of the things that I remember in the spring. There was always a roller that would come around. And roll the lawn. What the hell does that thing do? It just flattens out the bumps. Makes makes your lawn more track smoother, and and then you don't have as many. You're 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 not jiggling the mower deck when you're mm. cutting as bad. That makes a lot of sense because I guess during the winter, right, everything freezes and all the the you know the topsoil kind of shuffles around and stuff. Uh, not really. All not right. Really. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Because maybe the rolling might things move a little bit. Yeah. Did you like you? You have a huge yard, so you're not talking about like somebody pushing around a roller. You're talking about a guy with a machine. Yeah, he's actually it's his grandfather's. His father started running it when he was eight. He hand built the thing himself. What? It's uh, yeah, it's a half or it's a full ton rear end out of a pickup truck with two big steel drums off of that, and then kind of a homemade chassis with a little Briggs, a Briggs motor on it, and. Uh, He's changed it over to uh, hydrostatic drive, so he, he just pushes one pedal to go forward and one pedal to go back now. But uh, he sits on it sideways, and there's another little steer drum at the back. So so there's three drums, and he's sitting on, on it. That's it's a pretty cool machine. That's incredible. So what's, what's in the drums, though? Isn't, isn't there something like water or something in it to weigh it down, or is it just in, on, in and of itself? Usually sand or water or concrete. Right. How do you, I'm not sure what he had in his. And he's got probably what, like some sort of a trailer that he drops it off on? Because you don't just drive yep. that thing to the place, right? You don't go to down the street. <laughs> ring, 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 ring. <laughs> All right. Okay. Nope. He had a trailer. Good enough. I have a feeling we're going to talk a lot about gear today. <laughs> Unless you want to do any. Because me. Because we talked all about guns last week. Guns. I think it's. I think it's only fair to talk about gear. Yeah, and I got to say too. While we're while you said guns. I wouldn't, you can't, you wouldn't believe how many people ask me where to go get that SKS 45. Where do you go get that gun? <laughs> well, you could go to Underwood and to the Huron Rod and Gun Club or get Rod and Gun, pick one up there. Or apparently they have them at Canadian Tire. They're just not on display yet. So you'll have to ask your friendly uh, uh, garden center guy if you could see one at your local Canadian Tire. You're kidding me. Yep. No, I'm not. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't know, but I didn't like in the, really? Apparently, that's what Robbie told me. He says, well, I got them. I just don't have any place to display them. Good Lord. So what is this? Is this, this is like a, this is a gun for collectors and shooters, but there's, there's no practical yeah. reason to have this gun, right? It's just, it's fun to shoot. Yeah, right. <laughs> that's what she said. You know, <clears throat> I was thinking about, I'm, I'm trying to write a list here. All the different a list, uh, yeah, a little list of all the different pieces of gear and stuff that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and oh. uh, just that depth five, it kind of got me thinking. You know what I mean? Hmm. 
So, so d- d- is it the SPX90? Is that what I was thinking of last week? Yeah, that's exactly right. The the reverb unit. Well, it's a, like a multi effects processor, I think. Mm-hmm. It's the Yamaha SPX90. But I'm thinking now. What I was thinking of was the SPX900. I think because they came out with the next model up or something like that. And I just I remember when when I was 13 or so. Uh, we'd go around to all these different project studios, you know, like Dave Kalmuski had one or Greg Deckard had one or Billy Knapp or whatever. And I would just yep. go and ring the buzzer doors and just, just get into these different studios and sit around and hang out and look at the gear. <laughs> yeah. Everybody had an SPX 90 in their rack. Yep. That's right. I see it now. Yep. But I'm trying to think of the, well, I actually have a bit of a story about my Yamaha uh, processor, but maybe we should play some tunes first and then uh, then come back to these stories. You want to do some kiss, do you? I don't want to, but I mean, it's your I show. Wanna. I don't want to. <laughs> I knew you were going to want to. <laughs> what, what are we playing? Let's play a little cold gin followed by Firehouse by the hottest band in the land. Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Perhaps sipping your cup of joe. It's another typical morning, but something is different. You hear a sound unlike one you've ever heard before. You realize that you may have stumbled upon the greatest audio discovery since the dawn of mankind. Oh, I see what you're posting. You realize that you're in. (laughs) Got my video up on your MacBook. I can see my my pop shield. Yes. (laughs) We just had a we just had the power flicker. I don't know if it's because of Kiss. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah if anybody's gonna come down on us it'd be gene <laughs> isn't that the truth <laughs> what are you guys doing playing our music isn't that the truth i'm not sure if we're on the internet right now we should be though wait a minute how am i talking to you if we're not <laughs> <laughs> you've got one of those really really long string and can system yeah i can't believe i do this for a living whatever <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can't believe anybody pays you either. <laughs> you know, I haven't figured that part out yet. Like they actually do every month. It's weird. Hmm. I was I was just thinking there before those tunes. Um, unless you want to talk about those tunes. Oh, I don't care. No, that's not. Um, <laughs> I can talk a little bit. All right. You you like the cold gin you know. tune? You like that tune? Cold gin. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, that yeah, was, the older stuff, but I don't mind. Yeah, I don't really care for that. You know, like I said before, I think it was when Bruce Kulick came into the band. I think that's where I was kind of like, this sucks. I don't want to hear it anymore. Maybe it was just me. FX 500. I was like, I think I was maybe 15 or 16. 16, somewhere around there. Sounds about right. Yeah, that's where I went and bought an FX five hundred at uh, what was the what was the music store in London, Ontario that we used oh, to go to. There was a couple of them. There was uh, John Balones. John Balones. Which, or you probably got it off of uh, uh, Wellington Street. Uh, shit, the one where you stole that guitar and that other Roland thing. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I got what it from. What's that called? Yeah, I know the place you mean. Music Mart. Does that sound right? No. Mm. Yeah, I've stolen a lot of gear in my days. You want me to message Jevin? <laughs> no, nah, I think it was John Balone's. It was where I got that FX five hundred, and I remember taking it home, and I was just blown away because it was my first multi effects processor. All I had prior to that were pedals, you know. Pedals. Yep. And you don't realize when you're sixteen that it sounds like shit, you know. And it, Actually, it doesn't sound bad. I use it in, I use, you, you know how I've got the one side com- completely dry and then my other signal wet? Yep. Uh, I use it as a mainstay for uh, uh, just a light delay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you're using it for some, maybe some delays or some light choruses and stuff like that, it sounds pretty good. The distortions in the amp modeling is terrible. Oh, though. God, no. No. No distortions. But that's what I was using it for at the time because I had... A pretty horrible rig, really. I had a I had a Yamaha Pacifica guitar, which was a nice guitar. The yep. guitar itself was good. 
<clears throat> but I it had was, a. It was a smooth runner. It was fast. It was a really fast neck. neck, neck. It, was, it was paper fan, big like jumbo frets. You know, basically what it was. It was. It had the. Are we on here? We should be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I didn't know we came back. <laughs> <laughs> this is the show. This is exactly what people tune in for. Oh boy. We should be on the air. Let me check. Yeah, I see myself right there. Um. Okay, so this is our next segment. You didn't do the, the t the tail off the songs. Sure, I did. No, oh, I played it. Maybe it didn't come back through your fullback. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This, I'm just producing. I don't really know what's going on. <sighs> but it had the the Demarzio pickups, the the ultra thin high radius neck with the jumbo frets and everything, and the double locking Floyd. So it was basically like an Ibanez. Um, but it just it it was super playable. And yeah, it was nice. I liked it. Yeah, it's a great guitar. I got, I, I played that guitar for years. But um, then I had this horrible, horrible amplifier. That PV? Yeah, called a PV Musician. And it wasn't really a guitar amp by any stretch. It was just an amplifier head that you could plug anything into. Yeah. And then a 212 cabinet that was built. It was hand-built, wasn't it? It was hand-built by, uh, who was, God, who was the goal? Who was the guy with the beard? <laughs> the guy with the red hair with the beard from Sorensen's. Oh, Brown, Murray Brown. Murray Brown. Sweet hey, Murray. Murray. Yeah, Murray Brown built that cab. Sweet Murray. Anyway, so <clears throat> I threw a FX500 on top of it. Now, I'm, I'm getting to my story. Mm -hmm. Is, you know, at 16, I, I bought the, the unit and everything. It was great, but I had to hand surf through all the patches and stuff. <laughs> he said unit. Because <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a foot controller, you know, and you could get a, a MIDI controller for it. But, you know, when I was 16, way back then, you, you couldn't, like, if you knew there was a foot controller for it, you would find out from a music store. But you'd be lucky if you could see a picture of it. You, it's not like yeah. you could go on the Amazon and just like, oh, I want that and buy it. No, they didn't, they didn't have pictures either. Right. So I remember I asked my parents for Christmas for the foot controller. And... <laughs> I have a feeling I know where this is going. <laughs> I was so excited because I'm like, man, this is going to be amazing because this is all I want. I want to be able to switch patches with, you know, my feet. Yep. And, uh, you know, I told him that I, what it is and it's a, it's a MIDI controller for the FX 500 and you can buy it at John Balone's and blah, 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 blah. And I remember my mom and dad saying, we're not going to get that for you. We're not going to get it. It's like, it's $110. You're not, we're not getting it. Oh no. Like, okay. All right. Break that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> So Christmas came, Christmas sort of went, and all the gifts were like done. And I'm like, all right, we're done here, I guess. That sucks. Go put on my fucking sweater, I guess. <laughs> and your new slippers from grandma. And then then dad is like, oh no, 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 there's one more thing for you. I'm like, oh, okay, awesome. Here we go. Here comes the here comes the BB gun, you know, metaphorically. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a metaphor. And he hands me a, a you know, a, basically like a cable that is wrapped up in, in wrapping paper, you know, like a child wrapped it or something. <laughs> like, okay. Got great. you a mini cable. <laughs> he did. It's like, so I opened it up and it's, a, and it's a fucking mini cable inside of it. I'm like, Oh my God, it's a mini cable. What the hell? <laughs> what can I do with it? I don't have any mini gear. <laughs> so I was standing here holding the mini cable with like the saddest Christmas face in the entire world. <laughs> Not like ninja weightlifting? Right. But then mom went, I think mom was like, look, no, there's one more gift back in the corner. It's like, oh God, here we go again. But I go and there's a little box. And the box was maybe, I don't know, maybe about two feet by four inches. There's a little box. That's that's about right. How how deep? Maybe three, four inches. Not even. Okay. So pretty, that, pretty small. That That should be about the right size. And I'm like, this can't be it. This can't be it. I didn't open it yet. I'm like, this can't, it's too small. There's no way this is the foot controller because every, every time I go and buy a guitar magazine and I look at, you know, guitar players with their foot pedal boards, you know, they're big and they're huge and they're metal and they're amazing, you know, and they got like expression pedals and shit on them. Yeah. <laughs> so I opened the thing up and it was, it was the pedal board, but it was little. And it was plastic and it had these four little five little plastic foot switches on it i'm like oh no it's the wrong one no it's the right one 
It's the one that goes with the FX500. Really? It actually went with it? Yeah, and it's a, just a MIDI controller. And it was so disappointing because it was so small. And the MIDI cable that they got me was like 10 feet. <laughs> so, so I had to basically stand beside the amplifier and program the five different patches I could do. And then I think it was like maybe, like I think there was an up-down switch and then three you know, a foot switches for each of the patches within the bank. Right. right. <sighs> but it's... Well, I don't know what kind mine is, but I got, I got a big one with two expression pedals and then six or seven, you know, yep. patches, blah, blah, blah. That's, that's, yeah, I got uh, the predecessor. Or the, that, what do you call it? What do you call the opposite of predecessor? You got the... Oh, dear. Post-decessor. Yeah, the the post, you got the post-decessor. That's right. <laughs> I got the I got the Yamaha FX 550. Uh, what's the what's I don't even know what the difference would be. This they just cleaned it up a little bit to give you uh, a couple like the patches are a little bit different. I think they added another. I think they doubled how many patches are in it. Like how many pre-programmed patches were in it. Mm -hmm. I think I couldn't tell you for sure. Uh, I I use it just as my my guitar sound on the one amp in my dirty or my wet my wet sound. Just a bit of delay. Yeah, I, I think I've I think I've made pretty remarkably bad choices when it came to buying uh, effects. That was one of them. It's hard though. It's hard because you got you got your um, serious pedal guys like the the box pedal like Boss. Yeah, you got some serious guys that love their stomp boxes. Then you got the other guys that are all into their rack units, and they've got fucking. Uh, Eventides and mm -hmm. the latest Roland and, and uh, BBE Sonic Maximizers and Furman Power I Regulators. Yeah. <laughs> uh huh. I don't know. I've I've got a few pedals. I got my FX 550. I'm running my 410 cab out of my 5150 and and a two by twelve out of my Yamaha uh, Princeton Chorus. And it's got a really nice chorus in it. So I just pretty much use that i got a flanger pedal and a delay pedal and a compressor i i think in a while my my last rolling rig was uh half good i had everything but the fx part of the chain was good mm -hmm. all right so i had like you know was, my two main guitars was uh fender strat deluxe and and a gibson les paul and mm -hmm. then i had my my amps were great you know i had a 410 hot rod deville Yep. And then a 212 Blues Deville Tweed. I like the Tweed. The Tweed is a great, they're beautiful amps. They just, the, they sounded amazing. The, the overdrive in them was so good. <clears throat> and then the problem was, is that I did the same thing that I had a wet dry mix uh, like you did. And I used, unfortunately, I thought it'd be so good because it's Boss. I bought a Boss GT5. So it was a multi effects processor, but a floorboard, right? I'm like, this has got to be good because it's a Boss, you know? And it was one of those things, again, guess what? You know, you, I saw in the music store a brochure for it. And it's mm -hmm. like, it's like I don't know, it's like 800 bucks or some shit. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll order it. And I remember pooping. I was sitting in the, in the store. I was working in, in the retail store, People's. And I was taking a poo. And I was looking down at the floor tiles. And I'm like, okay, are these floor tiles are like one by one. And I'm trying to imagine like how big the unit is. Yeah. You know, and once again, once again, box arrives, open it up, and it's dinky. It's this little dinky thing. The good news is, is this one was made out of metal. Mm. The bad news is, is that, I mean, it sounded like a crappy low bit effects processor that just, I don't know, it just kind of sucked. <laughs> well, I don't know. My, my, uh, Princeton chorus, it's a valve state. So I don't use that distortion very much. Only a very little bit. And yep. then I roll in some off the FX five fifty, just a touch. But but my dry sound, that's where that's all tube tube driven, so that's nice, warm, dirty distortion. I went uh I got the this was <laughs> this is the this is the other component of my rig though that I thought was pretty ingenious. Uh, it's just, again, if you, if I were to change out the effects chain and put in maybe some good stomp boxes, it would have been great. But the, 
the kind of centerpiece of my wet dry mix was an Ernie Ball uh, blend pedal. Ooh, nice. So basically, you know, it's it was this. It, it was really cool. I mean, Ernie Ball makes amazing expression pedals and volume pedals and stuff. <clears throat> but this was beautiful because it was like really heavy duty, uh, quarter inch all through. And then all the way back was the A channel. And then all the way forward was the B channel. Right. So then as you as you backed it off from B, you're blending A in. So what I was doing is I would have amp A was wet and amp B was dry. Mm -hmm. So I could mix in with my foot how much of the wet signal is going to be there with the dry signal. And then the mm -hmm. cool part was is there was a little kicker on the top of it. So you like toe kick to the left, the switch, and it just becomes a straight volume pedal where the A and the B are, are perfectly blended 50-50. Sweet. Yeah, it was awesome. Nice. Yeah. Nice. And don't forget my favorite part of your old rig that you don't have anymore. The Hurley Gate. Oh, God, the Hurley Gate. <laughs> Remember when you and Luke tried to make a pedal for it out of wood and we, string? We didn't try. We did. We did. We did. It didn't work very well, though. Why don't, why don't you explain what the Hurley Gate did? Because <laughs> I think it's a brilliant idea. Well, the Hurley Gate's basically a Les Leslie external rotary speaker that you guys jerry-rigged with a pedal so you could control the speed on a variable basis whilst you played your guitar through the rotary speaker, changing the speed with the wooden and string pedal. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> <laughs> but the, the, the concept, I think, is, is rock solid because... Oh, it, the concept is brilliant. I'm still waiting for a pedal. Your, your typical Leslie, which is a fast slow switch, and that's it. Yep. Yeah, uh, you don't have a choice. You got to play it as it changes on its own. Right. From fast to slow, or vice versa. But anybody who knows, especially when you're playing like a Hammond through that Leslie, some of the coolest sounds are the wind down. Yep. Of the speaker when you switch it to low gear, and it slowly you know spins down. So trying to find those special sounds that happen in between the fast and slow speed was the objective. So we put a, yeah, a variable speed motor on it, but the pedal itself, uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was, Cedar planks. <laughs> it was basically, we cut out some planks and some dowels and then we had like, yeah, some strings on, <laughs> it was, it, like was... <laughs> <bass drum> pedal. <laughs> it was good though. We had like, I think it was, you know, the little wooden bobby things that thread comes in. Yep. I think that was what the Bobbins. string was attached to. Yeah. And that, that was what the string pulled when we, it was pretty cool. I was wondering if I could jerry rig my old volume pedal to do that to the, the Hurley gate. Yeah. I don't see why not. I don't, I don't understand. Like I'm not that good of an electrician. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'd like to figure it out though, but I do have an old volume pedal here that doesn't work really well. So I thought maybe if I can use that to run this variable speed on, on the old Hurley gate, that'd be pretty cool. I got, I've people offered to buy it for me or well, not buy, but trade me for other gear for that thing. I don't know how many times now. Wow. It's uh no, you can't have my less <laughs> no. go away. No. <laughs> All right, why don't we do this? I think we should play some no. tunes. No? Okay, we no. won't. Let's not. It's your show. Did you hear about care. Rob Ford? <laughs> no, I don't know. What's what's going on now? I'm just kidding. Play your music. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I feel really good about the the BCC. <laughs> That I played last week. I think it was pretty tight. I don't know if you got a chance to listen to those cuts. Yes, I did. And I thought I'd follow it up with another band that you've probably not heard of, but play some amazing hard rock. This is a band called Blitzen Trapper. <laughs> yeah, apparently, apparently earlier in the week, Rob Ford decided to take a leave to get his, because there's been another video of him smoking crack been outed uh -huh. so he decided to go to rehab or suppose supposedly and then he couldn't get across the border they turned him around at the border and apparently he was out of the country <laughs> at rehab and some lady saw him two days ago going into a fast food restaurant going in the bathroom change out of a suit into sweats and then head back out the door and yesterday Rob, rob's brother doug <laughs> said oh no that was me 
What? <laughs> yeah. God. So these guys are still <laughs> keeping the headlines rolling. I love these guys. <laughs> Man. <sighs> oh, my God. Only in Canada. Only in Only Canada. When BJ that was, is always better than Nine Yanks. PJ. Hey, where are you? I'm over here. Where are you? Ouch. <laughs> You're over there. <laughs> I'm, o- I'm over here. Uh, hey. I'm over here. Get back. Come back. Okay. okay, over here. Hey, who are you turning? Are you over there? Oh, I'm over here. 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 No, I'm over here. <laughs> I'm over here. You're, we're over here together. What's the deal here with this, uh, this story you put up about these 185 counterfeit guitars yeah. valued at a million bucks seized in Jersey City? A million City. dollars. One million dollars. What the hell's going on here? Well, I think the Americans are finally caught on to the Chinese building knockoffs. Yeah. <laughs> and there's been quite a few of us over here in the Western Hemisphere buying them up. I have one. I know a couple of buddies that have some. And, uh, yeah, I guess a port authority in New Jersey saw these crates coming in and marked as made in USA, Gibson, Fender, Ernie Ball, (laughs) Paul Reed Smith. God. They destroyed them. And some of them, I mean, because we're talking about some signature models here that people were going to pay like 50 grand for. Well, 15... 15 grand, I think, is your higher priced Gibson Les Paul Custom Signature Series, from what I've seen on their website anyway. Right. Well, I'm just looking at the article here, though, too, and it says that uh, anywhere from $2,000 for basic models to $54,000 for signature models. Yeah, I don't know if I believe that entirely. I don't know anybody who would pay 54 grand for a guitar. No. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Especially when it doesn't have your name on it. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> to sign my own. If it was the Harry Arcola, yeah, I might pay fifty four grand. I'd like to play that guitar. What would the Harry Arcola be? I don't know. I never even thought of it before. Huh. I'll just, I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you on that. Do that. You know, there's a one of our, you know, our biggest fan, who's also our biggest donor, uh, oh. and also the guy that we're gonna, we're going to end up having uh, dinner Terry. with. Terry, yeah. <clears throat> he he's got this. He's got. He's always putting pictures of Reverend guitars up. Mm, yes, and they look amazing. They look so gorgeous, uh, and it's funny because it got me thinking about how, um, when I was younger, and I wouldn't even say younger. I mean, even up until like my thirty, I, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, uh, I didn't want to play a guitar that wasn't a Fender or a Gibson. Yeah, I know. And you had a Granada. I did have a Granada. <laughs> you were supposed to sell to me. Do you remember how? Oh, here we go. <laughs> here it's okay. We, I don't right. want to get into that. No, no, I have a Chinese knockoff. I've ordered a Chinese knockoff from China from the website. And to be honest with you, I'd rather play that thing. I think it sounds better than any of their subsidiary companies like... Uh, like, for example, Squire or what's the Les Paul subsidiary? Uh, Epiphone. Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds way better. Sounds way better than an Epiphone. I, n- I never liked Epiphone. No, uh, me neither. No. I enjoy their acoustics, uh, but that's about yeah. it. Me. Me. I yeah. don't know. I'm, I'm kind of meh on the reverence, too. Uh, what's the place that Kitchener stocks them? Um, when you get up close, there's a few things about them. It's just like, you could have spent a little more time. Oh, really? That. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. Anyway, mm-hmm. I don't I know. I never I've played one though. Never played one. Never been up close to one yet. So I'll have to find out. I had a good look at a few of them. I just, I just, I had a weird thing. I just remember that I couldn't, I, I didn't want to buy a guitar that was a different shape. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know. Well, it's it's kind of it's kind of the the I guess in your youth size, it's kind of the uh, the stature of it, right? If if I have a real S. Paul. If I have a real Stratocaster, then I'll be a serious player. Right. Yep. I mean, and I can get all the tones of the serious players. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, in reality, it doesn't matter. No. I don't think. No. 
I don't think. I liked I liked your little post you put on uh, our Facebook page. Uh, top twenty things you don't <laughs> want to hear from guitar players. Oh, yeah, my, one of my favorite was that. Well, if you can play guitar, you can play bass. <laughs> yeah. My favorite was the one that that, uh, that you say all uh, you were you just got finished putting out of your mouth the other week. Oh, that it's all in the hands. Or no, are you yeah. talking? <laughs> yeah, so it's all in the hands. <laughs> it is all in the hands, though. <laughs> but it is. <laughs> and I don't I don't want to be the purest guy. Like, I'm like, here, just give me a guitar and a cable and amp. That's all I need. It's like, I, I know that. I get that. But yeah. it's kind of, it's, it's the way people say that. Like, it's like, I'm just so good that I don't need all the crap. Yep, that's exactly what they're saying. But the thing is, though, the only people that really care are other musicians. That's right. Like if you if you're I don't know, like the, if you're playing a reverend guitar through a bunch of stomp boxes and a fifty one fifty amp, does that in any way affect whether or not you're going to get laid? I don't think so. No, it's got absolutely no bearing on how you're going to sound in some crappy club. No, nope. it's all in the hands. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We should do something. Oh, we should. We should do something. Should we bring the segments back into the show? Maybe we should bring some segments back. I think we can do that. You want me to do one to you? This would be funny. You want to do a segment? I don't really have I gotta one I got to guess the up. lyrics here. It's ready to go. It's funny. All right, I'll, I'll do a little marker here, and you go ahead and do it. Okay. Boop. Is that my marker? Yes. <laughs> well... <laughs> Someone told me yesterday that when you throw your love away, you act as if you don't care. Mm. You look as if you're going somewhere. But I just can't convince myself I couldn't live with no one else. Oh, man. And I can only play that part and sit and nurse my broken heart. God, I know what this is. I think this is why we stopped doing these segments. <laughs> I don't know what this is, but I think I know what this is. Okay. But I think I think we should just blow into beer bottles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I already give up. I give up. So lonely. So lonely. So lonely. Oh so lonely. God, police. Yes, sir. God, that's good. That's really good. <laughs> I couldn't believe it started with, well, well. <laughs> I, I haven't listened to the police in a long time. I should go back and put some police on my phone. I don't like the production. You don't? I hate that, that British thin production. Yeah, I, 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 get, I get that, but that, you know what it is? It's because I think in part it's because Sting was a pretty miserable bass player. <laughs> I just watched Copeland raving him out the other night on a video oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit and i appreciate it. i mean like because obviously sting hello wrote the, some of the most incredible melodies and tunes ever yep. um and it's not easy to sing and play at the same time nope especially to sing lead and play bass in a three-piece band i mean you got a lot of weight on you busy 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 yeah but i mean his bass lines were still pretty kind of like wah, wah. <laughs> I don't even recall really listening to it. The bass. Do yourself well, it's that a British thin recording. You couldn't hear it anyway. But I love Copeland. I mean, I love Copeland. I like what he does with his hands. He's he's super creative. <laughs> That's what she said. <laughs> he's really creative. So I don't know. You can't deny. I mean, that he he defined so much of the police sound. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I had a thought because I was looking at this list of gear that I was thinking about. And there was a couple of things. Oh. I, do you? What's remember, on your list? 
the Rockman amps. Do you remember the Rockman amps? Kind of. Okay. <clears throat> these I are these the logo, but I can't remember what they were on. They looked they looked like a ghetto blaster. Oh yeah. And they were two ple- <laughs> two pieces. There was a handle on the top and you could separate it into stereo. <laughs> And you know who played one of those forever? No. Kim Mitchell. Really? Yep. <laughs> it was like his main rig was a rock man. <laughs> and he swore by that thing. Well, he did have some good tones. He had some great tones. Maybe it was his hands. It's all in the hands. <laughs> what do you have, though? He had that Charvel guitar, basically, right? Or at least it's it... a Charvel. I thought he was playing Fenders. I think it was a Charvel. Now we're going to have to. I thought he was a Strat guy. We do this every show. We do, don't we? And then next week, well, you go on Facebook and you correct me. <laughs> <laughs> and then next week we, we we settle it. Yeah. <laughs> but I feel like he had a, I think he had a Charvel, like a blue Charvel with a maple neck, you know, with a banana headstock on it or something. Banana hammock? Banana hammock. Maybe I'm crazy. But he had a Rockman amp. Jeez. Sometimes, what else is on your list? I was thinking about, I can't remember the name of the, it was an ADA. Do you remember that? Tube preamp. Yes. yes. Uh, they had another name, didn't they? Yeah, I can't remember. It had the blue buttons on the front. Yeah, it was like Lexus or something. Damn it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I think it was ADA. I can't remember what the rest of it, though. And I remember. Digitech? I, no, it wasn't Digitech. It wasn't Digitech. No. 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 God, this will bug me all day. <laughs> Are you cleaning your camera? Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I just, I feel, I, 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 I'm trying to remember why I wanted that preamp so bad, but I think it was just because, you know what happened? And this is how the world's probably changed is that, you know, it was all about advertising and marketing in guitar magazines. You saw it. It looked cool. Yep. There was, it's nice now though, because you got guitar world online. They got their own Facebook page and you could, they, they do rig tests all the time. Are you doing anything like I, I get sometimes I buy magazines. I subscribe to magazines on my iPad, like Mix Magazine and stuff. Yep. Yep. And that's pretty nice. Yeah, I like that one. But it's the same thing. I mean, it just turns me into a gear slut. Like I just sit there and dream about all these different pieces of gear. Unfortunately, yes. Well, my, you know what I'm on right now? I want an electric cello. <laughs> really? I don't have anything without frets. I want something that's fretless. Yeah. Yeah, that's a challenge. It is. Hmm. I anyway, this is this has all got me thinking. Uh, because you know, I I need to get some new studio monitors. <clears throat> and I think I'm gonna get the Yamaha uh the HS eighties. No, not S tens. I'm gonna get the powered studio monitors. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. And they're really great because I went into uh and along McQuaid and I I tried, I don't know, 10, 15 different pairs of monitors. You got a long McQuaid down in Costa Rica? No, I went in, in Waterloo. <laughs> And uh, of all of them, the Yamahas is, were beautiful, just pure, organic, perfect, you know. And I don't know if it's because I like, you know, the old S10s or whatever, but. And S10s. And S10s. But. <clears throat> well, that, that's the sta- that was the standard in any studio, right? That was your near yeah. field speaker monitor. Every studio had them back in the day. I, don't, I think a lot of them still do today. But now that the world is so digital and internet savvy and all, all converted and everything, I, I don't know if they do that anymore. Like all my buddies in their home studios, they've upgraded to like other comp- other brands. Yeah. Well, everyone's going with just an active monitor now too, because why well, have yeah. a separate amp? I mean, there's no point when you can have an amp that's built in and tuned to the speaker. It makes life easy. So I think I was I yep. think the HS 80s or something like that, or the Yamaha ones that I was looking at, and they just sounded great. Um, but it got me to thinking, you still got that old tape machine, right? Oh, my old, uh, a track. Yep. Yeah. Right and, here. <laughs> and you still, you still got that old desk, right? Yeah. The big Walker. Yep. The 16 channel, but the thing's as tall as I am. <laughs> God. Kind of makes me want to, kind of makes me want to come home for a little bit. Well, you should. And set up. Next weekend would be an op- opportune time to. <laughs> Okay, what's next weekend? Now the two four weekend. Oh, I could fly home and we could set up a vintage studio. Well, I'll wait till my shop's built, and then All then right. we'll actually have a studio to set it up in. Do you have any tape? Yeah, yep, 
Yep, yep, yep, I do. All right, so we got we got a little internet research to do because look, if we set this up, I'll I'll buy the tape. I'll buy some new tape. Can you get new tape? Yeah, you can get new tape. Really? Yep. Yeah, there's like one or two companies that still make it. It's, it should be it shouldn't be that hard. I'll look for it. But okay. it's what two inch eight track that we need, right? No, not two inch eight track. It's fucking quarter inch. Wow, quarter inch eight track. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay, I'll look for that. I will also go on eBay and see if I can find a depth five unit. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're gonna have to take some time with that desk because J Real rewired the whole thing somehow, and it, I don't understand it. It's very complicated. <laughs> mm. Okay, well, we'll take a look. Like at Like all the onboard effects and, and r the routing on it is... All right. I don't get it. I don't get it. Right, I'd have to have him explain it to me again, I think. Well, it sounds like we got a project. I think we do. <laughs> Good morning, Harry. Good morning, Carl. Uh, <laughs> Eric! <Eric-or. laughs> 